I don't do meetings, I don't do calls, and despite that, or maybe even because of that, I've been able to grow two businesses into multi-million dollar companies. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why I don't do meetings, how I don't do meetings, and how you can avoid wasting a huge part of your week by eliminating 90% or even 100% of the meetings and calls that you have. So I have this friend, he's a fellow entrepreneur, and the guy is constantly on calls and meetings. I mean, every time I'm like, dude, wanna have coffee? He's like, oh, I can only do this time because I have a call. You know, we're playing tennis. He's like, oh, I gotta go because I have a meeting. I actually feel bad for him because he's a smart guy. His business is doing okay, but he's constantly in calls and meetings. And I just, I ask him sometimes like, what are these calls and what are these meetings? He's basically like, oh, I gotta talk to the, you know, the team about this. I have to talk to the team about that. And it made me realize that a lot of entrepreneurs are like this where their business is something, e-commerce, software, consulting, an agency, but they spend their time on meetings. It's like the business is not meetings. The business is not calls. The business is doing, it's executing, it's getting things done. And meetings are one of the worst ways to do that. In fact, like I mentioned earlier in this video, I've been able to grow two companies with essentially no meetings. The only meetings I have with my current company is I have a once a month call with my co-founder, Josh. Half of that is just shooting this breeze about this and that. We also do talk business, but it's more of a catch up than really anything actionable because we get everything done via email and other asynchronous tools. So why do we have basically a no meeting policy at my company? And why do we have the same one in my last company? And what made me really realized this was sort of the way Mandalorian style to go. When I first launched Backlinko, I was on meetings and calls all the time. I would do meetings to catch up with the team. I would do calls with random entrepreneurs who I met online. I ended up spending, I would say half my day doing this and that and half of it on meetings and calls. As sort of an experiment, I was like, what if I just didn't do these meetings or calls? And what really pushed me to try that was I wanted to write more. I wanted to produce more. In the early days of Backlinko, I was growing the blog. I started creating courses. I started the YouTube channel and I realized like, this is up to me, like I need to produce. The more I wrote and the more I created, the more traffic I got, the bigger the audience was, the more money I was making and all that stuff. And I realized meetings were basically distracting me from that. What I didn't realize was that meetings don't just rob your time, they rob your momentum and ability to get things done. Most meetings are just a way to procrastinate on making a decision or doing work. And I'm just talking about meetings in general, besides the fact that when you're in the meeting, it's a huge waste of time in the vast majority of cases because you have all these people just giving their input, trying to look smart, as opposed to actually doing work. When you're trying to build something, it's all about doing. Planning, talking, discussing is like should be like 5% of your time. The rest of it is actually executing and doing. And that's what I realized with Backlinko. Once I stopped doing meetings and calls, I was able to output so much more. I was writing like 300 and something thousand words a year at one point because I was just getting up, writing blog content, doing some email and stuff like that, and then going back to writing. And I was able to produce so much content over a short period of time. I'm exploring topics I'm not writing anymore. I'm like a traditional CEO, but even then, most CEOs are spending their time in meetings with other people. Instead, I'm actually planning things, I'm tinkering, I'm working on stuff. I'm able to actually feel like I'm working on the business instead of in the business. And a huge secret of that is basically having no meetings. Now, it might seem extreme. It's like not drinking alcohol or not eating gluten or something. It's so much easier just to have none, right? Then always make a constant decision over whether I should do it or not. For example, I eat gluten-free. So when I go out, it's easy because I just see like a whole bakery. I'm like, okay, I can't go there. Instead of having to decide every time I walk by, should I get a donut? Should I get a croissant? I just know. It's the same thing with meetings. Once you get away from them and say, we're gonna experiment with having no meetings for a week, no meetings for a month, it might be tough at first, but it actually makes things easier in terms of the experiment as opposed to trying to cut down on meetings, which is a lot harder to do and a lot harder to measure whether you're doing it or not. But the biggest benefit of no meetings, I didn't even mention yet, it's that everyone becomes autonomous and they can make their own decisions. The reason that's important is two reasons. First of all, it empowers your staff and your team. So a lot of teams are set up where someone has to get approval for everything or there needs to be discussion and, and the group needs to agree on something. Most decisions are pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And if you have good people, you should trust them to make decisions on their own. So they feel empowered. The other reason is things move along a lot faster because decisions are being made at the individual level and they're able to just move things along as opposed to discussions. Discussions are generally a huge waste of time, especially the way meetings are constructed where like the loudest person tends to get their way or the person that's the most articulate, not necessarily the person that's right. Like a lot of times in a meeting you have 
someone that's really quiet and reserved, they might have actually the best idea or the best way forward, but there's someone super alpha in the meeting that's trying to bang on their chest and bang the table for their idea and say how great it is, they usually get their way, which is a really bad way to make decisions. It's much better, in my opinion, to sort of disperse decision-making out to the autonomous level and letting everyone make micro decisions on their own. That creates a team where they feel empowered, they're doing stuff, they're moving things forward, which is good for morale, but also the speed of things you can execute on is so much faster when everyone can decide as opposed to what should we do with this? What about this headline? What about this subject line? What about this wording? What feature should we work on next? Those should all be things that people can decide on their own all, or in a very small team. So the big question is, what do you do instead? You're not having meetings, you're not having calls. How do you move things along? How do you discuss issues? Because you will need to, of course, like discuss some minor things as they come up, even if someone's totally autonomous. And we use Notion for everything and email. So when it comes to you know projects and where things go, we just use Notion boards for everything. If there needs to be something that you know is like would take 10 years to write, we use a Loom video. Open Loom, discuss something, talk about it. This and that needs to be done or explain how a process that you're doing and just send it to the person. That usually alone can eliminate like 80% of meetings because a lot of meetings are updates where you're updating people on how things are going. And that can be done easily via email, Notion, Slack, whatever. We purposely actually don't use Slack because it's not really async. Like we're big into async where you can work on your own, you can do your focused work, you're not gonna be interrupted, and then you can check when you you know have downtime. You can check Notion, you can check your email. As opposed to Slack, where there's sort of a semi-obligation to be there all day, it's not really async. So we really focus on async stuff and we're able to get things actually done faster than if we used something like Slack or had a bunch of meetings. So all in all, the no meetings and no calls policy accomplishes a couple things. First of all, I hate meetings. I hate calls. So first of all, it gets that off my plate because I hate doing them. Whenever I have a meeting or a call on my schedule, I dread it uh, for days. And now I really don't have that many, maybe like one or two a month uh, max. And the only one I really enjoy is the one with my co-founder where we can just chat and catch up on how things are going. The other benefit is deep work. If someone feels like they're like chained to Slack all day, they can't have that two, three, four hour deep work experience that you really need to accomplish something great. Um, if you're interrupted every five seconds with Slack, you're not really doing deep work. By just eliminating meetings and eliminating uh, synchronous communication, you almost have deep work as a default. And the last benefit is speed because you're not waiting for the meeting on next Tuesday to discuss making a decision about something, you're just doing it. And you'll find that with a small team, you're just executing and doing and shipping and creating and publishing so much faster than you would if you had a bunch of meetings. And that's really a, a huge secret of why startups are able to beat incumbents a lot of the times. Incumbents are in meetings all day. All they're doing is discussing, making decisions and discussing whether they should do something and having meetings about meetings when the startup is just executing. Even as Exploding Topics grows and the team is growing, um, we're about 10 people now, I still hope to have this no meetings policy in place even if we're 100 or 200 people in the future. So that's about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on meetings. Do you also have no meetings or do you try to limit them? Or maybe you have tons of meetings all day and you think it's the greatest thing in the world and I'm an idiot. Either way, leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video.